I know it was going to be a double header. Thank you, man. I'd like to welcome everyone for the shiur. Um, so studying to the parashat Tazria. In Israel, it's a double header, Tazria and Metzora, a double. And there's certain topics that we're going to talk about in the parasha, and maybe mention in the shiur as well. So the first thing is to mat yoledet. And the, the, the Torah talks about a woman that, that gives birth, and she really gives life. And here's the astonishment, and maybe in amazement. You think, you know, when a, when a, when a give, the woman gives birth, that's like the biggest miracle there is, giving life. And yet the Torah talks about that. She is uh, spiritually impure. And she has to go through a process of purification, like an idah which means seven days of, of cleaning or no bleeding. And then, uh, and then there's a period of 33 days of the Meitara. She can't eat any of the Korbanot, which is uh, Kodesh, until she finishes a period of 40 days for a boy or 80 days for a girl. Um, and even though it's like one week of Tumatida for a, for a boy, it's, it's two weeks for a girl. So that itself is very interesting. You know, why is there, why is it more too much for a girl than a boy? How would you explain that? Is that got anything to do with the brick mila? The fact that the... Uh, very interesting. I don't know. Could be. It could be. I was going to suggest an understanding. Um, is that the woman really gives, is a process of giving life. If you think about when, what's Tuma and Tahara, what is purity and impurity? So a lot has got to do with potential as well. Um, if you think about it, a Jewish person, a Jewish dead body is Tameh. Uh, a non-Jewish dead body is not Tameh. Really? No. Why? Um, no? Yes, yeah, so that's what I'm going to explain now. Because it's all got to do relative. And a Jew has an Ishama. Okay, so Anishma, if you can imagine, is infused with, with purity, which is connection between you and God. So when that look when that when you lose that, or when a person dies and he loses that, the connection of Nishama to his body when it leaves, that leaves a void, like an emptiness, which is an impurity. So it's a transition, of a transition. Um, in a way, you can look at it like that. Whereas a goy, he never had that level of spiritual connection beforehand so you didn't really lose anything so, mm -hmm. you know as you know if you can compare it to an animal which is live with that there's no really difference this is going to be an avila of a, of a kosher animal or one of the shatsim which is also different level but but i go no so if you think about it a boy and a girl which one is more representing life a girl why because she gives life right so a, a man on his right, obviously you need a couple to have a child, both one, but it's the woman which gives birth to another child. She's the one who produces, right? And you know, even one woman can give birth to several different children. Um, and she's the one who gives the birth to his life. So when you give birth to to um a, a male that or a child, then there's a certain tumor that's left her body. Um, if you think about it, that's also the reason why the nida on the um, how do you call it? Menstruation period. Forgetting my English. And then that's it. Men menstruation. Uh, what word? Menstrual. When she has a monthly bleed, that 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 period is two months, and she has to be clean for seven days, and she has to count, and then she goes to the mikveh. Why? What she done wrong? Nothing. She has done anything wrong. However, there is uh, an impurity of her spirituality has gone down. Why? Because the reason why she's got a period, if you understand a little bit of biology, it's, it's the uterus which is bleeding. Now, the uterus has had the opportunity to give birth to a child. And when there was no child born, because she didn't conceive, so then it causes the breakup of the uterus wall, and that causes the bleeding. So it's the loss of life, which is now caused... The impurity. It was a loss of potential. Loss, thank you. Thank you for correcting me, Joe. Loss of potential. But that's why it's different. 
You see, like, why, why is if a woman bleeds, is she impure? And if a man bleeds, is it impure? It's not impure. Somebody breaks his arm and bleeds, or someone gets stabbed and loses nine pints of blood, he's not impure. Even a woman, if she would bleed from a different place in the body, that wouldn't make her impure, doesn't make her nida. It's specifically the place of the uterus, which was the place to give potential life. If that is lost, that causes impurity. So here, when the, when the child is eventually born, so the child is born, but the woman has lost that, that potential. She's got, she's, it's left her body now. And if it's left the body for a girl, then it's more trauma than it is for a boy. That's just like the background over here. But I did really want to focus on the Hasidic interpretation of the Pasuk. Pasuk says, Isha ki If she plants a seed, or not, if tazriya is literally to seed, ki tazriya She gives birth to a child, a man, a male. But tuma, tuma she is here in So this beautiful interpretation of the Khatam Sofer, he, he completely explains the Pasuk totally out of context. And uh, but I like it. I'm going to mention it. We have to understand also the Torah when it's given to us by the by our Kaddish Baruch Hu, It's given on four basic levels of of the Pardes: Pshat, Remes, Drush, and Sod. So even now we just explained the Pshat level, which is the simple context of the word. But there's also a Remes, and there's a level of Sod which is behind that, the deeper meaning. Behind that. So here it's going to be like a remez. This is one of the Torah Tachasidut. So again, I saw this in my uh, video, man. And I like this idea. Yeah. So he, he, he talks about tzedakah. He says the whole pasuk is talking about tzedakah. Now how did you get from Ishaki Tazriya to tzedakah? It's like a little bit of a, uh, it's going to be creative, right? It's also maybe a little bit uh, imaginative. Has it got anything to do with tzedakah as a um, siman for a long life? Oh, very good. I didn't think about that. Joe's quite woman, right. The Gemara says, life. yeah, the Gemara said, I like that, Jesse. Look, this is beautiful. We were having a short Torah, and now Joe said a beautiful idea. The Gemara says, tzedakah tatil mimavit. Which means, in, the way, in Joe's words, you know, tzedakah gives life. It literally means tzedakah can save life. Um, and also I gave, I gave this week to Dakar also just for the life of this child, Michael Ben Abigail, you should have a full shlema. Because of this, that's the ability of the Dakar to save and, to, and to, to give life. So Joe is suggesting that here we're talking about, um, you know, the, the child being born and giving life. Maybe that's connected also to Dakar, where we say Dakar gives life. I like the idea. Thank you for saying that. That should be a merit also for, for all of us. So he goes on a different idea, but listen to his idea. He says, Isha. What does Isha mean? So he compares it to the Gemara, which Gemara says about giving to the car. Gemara says in Gitin, which means even a poor person, they goes around collecting, right? He goes knocking on doors, Say, please, I don't have food. I have a family. I need to, you know, please help me. And everyone gives him a few coins or whatever they need. Yeah. When he comes home and he counts his money, before he goes and buys himself food or gives it to his family, whatever he needs, he takes from that tzedakah and gives tzedakah. It doesn't matter how poor you are. You don't need to be rich to give tzedakah. Even the poorest man gives tzedakah. So he now interprets the pasuk as following. Isha is a woman, female. Now, we've talked about this before. In Judaism, and also a Kabbalistic concept that uh, a woman is a makabel, which means a receiver. So physically, she receives from the male, physically, and also emotionally, she receives from the male. And sometimes also financially, receiving from her husband. Um, also, that's the way the child is born. The, the man plants a seed, the woman receives the male seed and turns it into a baby, right? That's how she's the receiver, she's the makabel. Now, Kabbalistically, it's got a lot of meaning behind it. You, you really feed your wife, not only emotionally, but also the spiritual you're giving. And she's a receiver. So, says the Khatam Sofer, 
when the pasuk talks about isha, doesn't mean the literal, the physical woman as the woman who gives birth. It's talking about the woman in the sense of the one who is a receiver. Right? That's what I mean by isha. Isha means someone who receives, who is a makabel. Okay? Does that make sense? So he says isha is really referring to any poor person. Because a poor person who's dependent on others for his financial support, in a sense, he is like a woman in the way that he needs to receive. Does that make sense? Why is a poor man called a woman? I'm not, I'm not being nasty and calling him names, are you woman? But I'm just saying, that's like a poor man he needs to receive. He's like a woman who needs to receive. She depends on, you know, just like you have the, the sun and the moon. The sun gives off his light. That's like the man. And the moon just receives the light. A woman is a receiver. So a poor man is a receiver. So the pasuk, when it talks about Isha, it's just another way of describing the poor man as a receiver. Now, if that makes sense, listen to the following. Isha, kitazriya. Even the poor man, we said he has to give tzedakah. So, tzedakah is kitazriya. It's planting, right? You think about it, it's, a, it's an unusual word. You should say, isha ki tolid zakhar. What does it mean, kitazriya ve'elda zakhar? Right, it's a bit, it's a bit weird, uh, you know, uh, language, kitazriya. Yitazriya means she gives birth to the child, but Tazriya is from the word zera, which is seed, when you plant a seed. All right, so you literally do plant a seed in the woman, and literally, but here, you think Yitazriya when you plant Tzedakah. So Isha, the, the poor man, who's a receiver, is a poor man, Kitazriya when he gives Tzedakah. The Pasuk says in the Navi, Zorea lachem le Tzedakah. The person gives Tzedakah, it's like he's planting a seed. Why? When you put money in an investment, you're like planting, right? Like you plant seed in the ground, you wait for it to grow and bring fruit. Right? You put money into a business or into an investment and you wait for the money to grow. That is like, it's planting. That's the same, it's the same idea, right? Planting, investing. So kitazria is referring to charity. When a person gives his money to, to charity, it's not throwing away your money. It's an investment. And like Joe mentioned before, that is an opportunity for you to give. If you're up from yourself, if you're up from your own money, to helping others, that brings out Rachamim. That's also another kind of Kabbalistic idea. The Baras says, which means you have um, compassion or mercy on someone else. You say, okay, this guy, he needs help. He doesn't have money for Chag, or he's not self-supportive, or I want to give him for whatever reason you know, he needs. So you're bringing out the compassion. So me that connected me that Hashem gives further compassion on you. What do you need? Hashem gives you. Because you have compassion. That's, so Tzedakah is Matzmiyach Yeshua. So you say, Ishaki Tazriya, which means a poor man, when he plants his Tzedakah. Like every Tzedakah needs to give, every Poor man needs to give tzedakah. So, I would just like to share an, uh, an interesting idea. The Chazan tells us in Mesechet Kala. Mesechet Kala is one of the small Mesechtot in the Talmud Bavli written at the end of Nezikim. It's not even one of the big Mesechtot. It's just like a collection of Mishnah. Mesechet Kala. And he says over there, what should a person do to become rich, that his children should be rich. Listen, he wants to give his, make his, sure his children are well off financially. So you can also always start them off on a good start. And you can help them out along the way, but you know, not always around to be there. How can you make sure and help them that they have that, their children be benav ashirim. So he says, do the, the will of God, the will of heaven, what does that mean? Says the Mishnah, give his money, give out to poor people. He gave out his money to poor people. And then Gemara brings a story, or this Mishnah, about Rabbi, Rabbi Tarfon. He was a very rich, uh, rich man at the time of the Gemara. And he, 
At that time, he didn't give him out money to poor people. And he said, one time Rabbi Akiva saw him. And he said, listen, I've got a business idea for you. How would you like to buy a few cities? Like, it's not buy a property or buy a building or a street of houses. Uh, it's, it's a city. Now, I don't know if you know anyone who's rich enough to buy a whole city. But in those times, Rabbi Taufan, he was rich enough to buy a city. And not only one city, he said, how about four cities? So he said, okay, sounds like a good investment. He gave him a whole, you know, word of, of, word of cash. Oh, he said, I'll buy you one or two cities. So he gave him 4,000 uh, golden dinarim, rubles, he gave it to him. He said, go do the business. And then uh, he found him. What did Rabbi Akiva do with the money? He didn't buy any cities. He gave it all out to Tzedakah. So... I don't know in today's money how much that would be worth. I know maybe in those days cities were smaller, but if you just imagine one street of houses and properties, we're talking about an astronomical amount of money, uh, and he just gave it all out to poor people. So a lot of poor people were very happy. Yes. A few days later, Rabbi Taufan calls Rabbi Akiva, he meets him, and he says, okay, where, where's the investment? Where'd you pour the money? So he said, come with me to the Bet Midrash. Come with me to the synagogue. And open Sefer Tehilim. And he opened up the Sefer Tehilim and, and they're reading together. And they read together till they reach the Pasuk. He gave out his money to the poor people. And his righteousness will last him forever, for this world and for the next world. And he turned to Rabbi Tafon and he said, this is what I did with your money. Like it says in the book in the Tehilim. I gave out to all the poor people and you'll be rewarded in this world and in the next world. And Rabbi Tafon's response, Ahmad Rabbi Tafon Venishko, he kissed him and he said to him, Rabbi Alufi, Rabbi Bechokma, Alufi Bedel Kheret, go siflo mamon. He gave him even more money to give out to poor people. And that was, that was his reaction. So there is also, an interesting idea to, to relate. If someone has money to give, to give it to like one place, or even like split up and give it to a few different places, what's better to do? It's a good question. It's a question I ask myself. John, what would you think? Would you do Sorry, that? Sorry, I missed, I missed the question. My apologies. Okay. Let's say you did, you did a good business deal, okay, Gilad? You did good. You got 10,000 pounds for, for Maaser Tzedakah. Yeah. You did, a, you did a good business this week, came in 100,000, you got 10,000 for Tzedakah. So you can either give it to one place, maybe one synagogue, they do a nice little bit of refurbishment, or you give it to 10 different people. You need to give to 10, we know, that's what the Rambam says. Yes, very good, so Rambam. So you get it absolutely right. It's better to give to 10 people, and Joe's thinking, why? Why don't I give it to one person, you can enjoy it more. So if you, you take practice, it you practice screen, the yeah. muscle. You need to practice the giving muscle. Okay, so that's very good at one idea. Giving, giving to more people gives you more act of giving. But also, if you see, it's very uh, meduyak. Uh, I don't know how to say that in English. Meduyak. It's precise. Precise, thank you. So you're very good in that. <laughs> like online instant dictionary. Yeah, exactly. I, I, better than Google you. Translate. <laughs> that was instant. You're very precise in the wording of the Tepasuki Tehilim. Pizer, Pizer is to, Joe? <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. Do you know uh, Pizer, to, take it to, to spread out. To, to spread, yes. Yeah, to spread out. You spread out. You spread out your money to a different level. And like uh, Gilad said, quite rightly, the Ramam says that's what you should do with your money. Spread out. Now, one thing you gain from that is like Gilad said, that you train yourself to give more times. Be a more giving person. She is... Which is really an issue. That's what we're trying to do over here. I mean, here in this world, we're trying to make ourselves better people and be more giving. We're all born selfish. We're all born thinking about ourselves um, as babies. You know, feed me, give me, clean me. Mm. And we, as we grow older, we try and make ourselves more giving people. Like, like I said from the Balasulam, 
that we're all here in this world to become more givers. But if you look at it and the way we're talking about, about Mitzmiyach Yeshuot as an investment, you know, what's the idea of an investment? How do you know who's going to be the good person that's going to do good things with your money? So from an investment point of view, it's better to give it to different people. I do know which one is the tzaddik, which could give it. So at least you've got some shares in, in each of the companies. You know, a person which gives it to the should think about, give it to the right cause, give it to a good place, to trustworthy people, you know, they do good things with your money. So that is Matzmiyach Yeshuot. That is Zorea Tzadakot Matzmiyach Yeshuot. So if we go back to the Pasuk. Um, maybe one more line on Tzadakat Atim Mimamit. Another story of what did the Rabbi Natan. One talks about Maseh Bechassid. Sheh Agil B'Tzadakat. That was his daily thing. You know, he does his prayers. He does his tefillah. He does his uh, shiur Torah. And he does his tzedakah. He makes sure he does his tzedakah every day. That is a big mile a person should do that. Even if you can do a small amount, give something small every day. That way you know all the days of your life is, is with tzedakah. He was on a ship and the ship got wrecked at sea. The wind blew and the whole the ship sunk and went underwater. Now Rabbi Akiva was there as a witness. And he knew that the man was on the ship and the ship got wrecked. Now, if you know halakha, Gemara says in the Ketubot that if somebody sees a ship go down at sea, in sea, that means all the men on board, they all died. There's no, like, there's no way to survive. And if you witness that, then you can testify in court that the man died, and that allows his wife to get remarried. If there's no witnesses, then the wife just remains uh, so Rabbi Akiva said, okay, poor man, but at least let's set his wife free. So he went to court, to the Bedin, and he said, listen, this guy who was a Baal Chesed and he gave Tzedakah every day of his life, unfortunately, he was at sea, ship wrecked and, and, and sunk, and he was on board, and now his wife can get remarried. Now, Ed is giving testimony to that. Who walks in to the bet, 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 uh, bet Adin? Who walks in? Yeah, that man. He said, I am, I'm here. I'm alive. That means he didn't even get to testify. The guy walks in and goes, what are you doing here? How did you survive? What, what is your secret? How did you get out of that? And then he tells him the following. He says, yeah, you're right. The ship sank and we were all underwater under the sea. And he said, because I gave it to that car, that's what got out me out of the sea. He said, how do you know? How did you know it's because of tzedakah? He says, listen, I was out of focus and I lost consciousness and uh, I was out at sea, I swallowed water and I was choking. And then I heard voices. And, and he says, when I was deep in the water, I heard a loud noise coming from the waves. And what, the waves were talking to each other and they were saying, let's get this man out of the water because he did tzedakah all his life. And the waves passed me on from one to another, and that's how I got free. And I know, fact, the reason I got saved is because I did tzedakah all my life. And Nabi Kiva heard that, and at that moment he said, Baruch Elohim Elokei Yisrael, Shebaha bedivrei Torah bedivrei Chachamim. Shebaha Torah bedivrei Chachamim kaimim hem leolam ulamei olamim. He said, blessed is the God of Israel that chose us in the Torah and divrei Chachamim. And that's what we say, in Kohelet, Shlach lechmech al pnei amayim kibro vayamim timtzainu. Give out your bread. Bread meaning your money. Give it out, spread it out to the sea, to the people who need it, or Maim, Torah, the people who study Torah. One day you'll find it, it'll come back to you. And that's what the Pasuk says, which is Joe's line. You can save your life, it's Dakar. Dakar would save your life. And you see, this man, he was not in danger, life of danger, but he gave it to Dakar. Yes, that guy. And at the end, that's what saved his life. And we, he lived to tell the story. So, if we're going back to the Pasuk of Isha, ki tazriya velda zakha. Isha, we said, is a poor man who receives money. Tazriya, he said, is to plant the investment of tzedakah. And then, the final is, velda zakha. So he says, the khatam sofa, and this is the beauty. He said, you got a poor man, shemit parnis minat tzedakah. That means, he gets supported from Tzedakah. 
And yet he gives tzedakah. He himself is zorea. He said at the end, he will be Yalda Zachar. He will merit to give birth to a male. What does that mean, a male? A male, we said, is the, the one who's a giver, not the one who's a receiver. The poor man is a receiver. So what's, and he is called, the woman is a receiver. A poor man is called a woman. So what's a rich man called? Again, a poor man is a receiver. No, no, it's, it's a man. It's a, it's a Ben. So he said he starts off being a woman as a poor man. But Kita Zria, if he continues to give Staka and invest in Staka, well, does Zaka. In the end, he will be the male. He will be the one who's giving. He will be the rich man. And that's what the Pasuk is telling us. At the end, he will be so rich that not only he will give out his money to others, but he will be able to fully support and fully fund other people. That is the beauty in the Pasuk. He says, In the end, everything will change and he will be able to give our to others like a Zaka. So that, that was just a beautiful piece. And I felt that I had to share that with you. I hope you enjoyed that. Okay. Uh, that's, that's the first session of the Pasuk of Tumati Ulede. I have a question. Yes, please, question. You still got time. Um, There's more coming um, up. It's just the first. <laughs> the uh, so giving to the car is um, you get rewarded in the in the Ulama bar, right? Both, both. But, but, both. both. Which means the the main investment will be Ulama bar, the Karen. That's the but then, fund. But the perotem, the fruit, you still get a little bit of the investment of the interest in this world. Yeah, what's your question? But what if someone uh, commits a sin that is um, a soul, a, a cut off from the world to come, a death in this world and the world to come? Okay. Does and and but but what and if they give? So I'm just gonna recharge my plug in my oh. computer and we'll come back. Okay. Hold your question. I want to hear it. With you. Yeah, so the first part of the question was what happens if someone gives Taka and he'll be rewarded in the next world, but yeah. if he does something correct that he gets taken off the next world. That's your question? Yeah. Yeah. So if it's the same person who gives large amounts of Taka, yes, but then commits a sin that is a or say repeatedly commits a sin, right. is a, a soul cut off. Correct. So how does that tally? How does that you know what happens to it? It's a bit of a contradiction. Yes, it is in a way. Um, and I'll be honest, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> but because basically I'm not I'm not God. I don't know how God calculates it. However, everything gets taken into account, which means that the, the fundamental rule is good deeds get rewarded and bad deeds get punished. But you we know that Alta Se, but we know that there is a different relationship between Alta Se and Se in terms of the, 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 the sequence. So the Alta Se are the foundations, right? Yeah, and then absolutely. Se. Go on. No, so and then, then they they take, Are you saying they take precedence, Gilad? It, it means me Shmo Velasot, yes. Shmo Alta Se, Velasot, it's Vota Se. And uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so right? it's, more, it's more important to do good things than to not do bad things. That's what Gilad is saying. Right. But, but, yeah, but ultimately, ultimately, is alti tiyash mina poranut. I mean, definitely, a person will get punished for bad things that he's done wrong. No, I said I said the opposite. Actually, it's more important not to do bad things than to do good things. Oh, that's what you meant. Okay, mm -hmm. do you want to explain? So maybe you want to explain. Yeah, but which which means that alta alta se, it's it's the foundations, and then you have the tase, it uh, in terms of the. It, I, I don't. I, I can look for the source, I, but I learned it. Yeah, before. please find me a source because. 
Okay, this is, we're going a bit to digress a little bit. I don't mind, but it's a bit off topic. But um, we find a little bit of contradiction or different. Um, and I got, if you talk about halakha, because there is a concept of which means when the Torah says do something and not do something, like for example, don't uh, cause bleeding on Shabbat and do milah on the eighth day. So when there's milah on the eighth day, it's more important to do the brit on Shabbat than to not do the brit on Shabbat. That's which applies to all areas of the Torah under certain conditions and circumstances. So on the one hand, you see doing is more important. On the other hand, uh, Chazal tell us whenever we have a safek and when we're not sure, we say sheva al adif. It's better not to do something than to do something wrong. Sheva al adif. But you have a, a bigger chashash of zadon ma'asher shgaga be'al ta'aseh ma'asher be'aseh. Right? So zadon... Again, so again, speak, speak story. It, it means that be'al ta'aseh, yeah. right? if we think of zadon, chas v'shalom or shgaga. Shgaga can most, most more likely be when aseh not less than alta se the alta se certainly repeatedly is a don right so how can a, a mitzvah and a, a... ah okay okay so you let's bring out a point that um you can do something by mistake not do not want to fill in not do because amazon you can do that by mistake or that's what you mean but you can't can i don't know i'm not, I'm not sure about that you know some ways yeah but maybe you know you've watched in Chot Shabbat, when someone can be the Shogeg, be Mechalel Shabbat, just because you don't know what's allowed, what's not allowed, and you didn't mean it. Okay, I don't know, let's leave that. But the point which I want to answer, Joe, um, is you know, not, not specifically Tzedakah and Karet, but any, any mitzvot or any other word. Hashem does reward everyone for every single deed. How he does that, that's up to him. So it could be that he'll reward people in this world and give them plenty in this world and they all what they dream about, they'll get in this world as a reward for their some small deeds, right? The Gemara says that. If he's got majority bad deeds and minority of good deeds, then he can give him all his minority pay him off in this world and send him to, to gain on where he deserves. And if the opposite, if he's got mostly good deeds and a little bit of bad deeds, so for his own good, he'll make him suffer in some areas in this world. And then go up to heaven or call it a bliss. But that's just one way. Another way is to give it to his descendants, you know, the reward for his good deeds. But, uh, you know, we say, Hashem tamim pa'alo, tzul tamim pa'alo. Everything he does, and avel, tzadik ve'yashavu. We trust that he does calculate everything to the right amount. And we just got to try and be uh, the best people that we can be, you know, try and give all the goodness that we can give to others. Keep away from doing bad things and, and trust in Hashem that there are rewards. Alti Tiashmin Aporanut means don't give up or be discouraged from, from punishment, which has the double connotation. It means if you're suffering, Alti Tiashmin Aporanut. Don't get broken. People say, oh, look, God's done this bad to me and this bad to me and this bad to me. Forget it. Choke off the keeper and get and, you know, and run. It says, Alti Tiashmila Puranot. said, Whatever you've gone through, you've been through a rough time, trust God that it's for your own good. That's harsh. But Alti Tiashmila Puranot. But on the other hand, you see someone else, you're, you're going to Shur Torah you know, regularly, you're doing Brachot, you're going to Tfilot, and you see that your friend, nothing. No, no Torah, no Shabbat, no Kashur, nothing. And yet, he is having a good life. And you think, why, why is Hashem giving him so much? So, At the end, he'll get what he deserves. That, that, that I think, the Perush Rambam to, uh, to Pirkei Avot. That's the Perush. Yeah, yeah I, I, heard. I heard that God gives people like that, that he'll give and he'll give them in this world, but when it comes to the next one, it's... We don't know, but we, we are commanded to believe and trust in God, that the mastermind that created the world to take care of everyone. Um, and it's not really the quality, the quantity of how much you give, uh, how much things you do. We gotta do everything with a good heart that you're doing the right thing. 
you know, everything that you're doing, try and focus off what, why you're doing it. Uh, maybe I'll mention here, mention here, the Gemara says, oh, okay, I'll find it for you. Ezu, Ezu who set the Kabe Chol Et, Kolo Mefanes Lezamet Banav, or set the Kabe Chol Et. I think that is the right word. Let me find that for you. Um, Gabi, yeah, is there? Um, so I, I couldn't find, I searched like not intensively, but I did try to find a it's the calculator that will allow to calculate more systematically the tzedakah. Is there such a, a thing or such a yes, of course, know. of course, there is an app you can get on your on your phone, a uh, mass ceremony app, um, which is you just put in. I'm saying you're on the basics, but how much you're you receiving and how much you're spending. Um, I'm saying as it comes to company, and from it gives track every time you give something to that car, you just jot it down. Every time you earn money, you jot it down, and then it works out how much you still need to give. There's a few apps on that. I, I don't know, but uh, there, there's an easy way of doing it. Um, I do it myself just like on the old traditional way on the Excel. I now receive, and, and you know, every so often I update it, I make sure I, I get. Clean before you know the Chagim, before I go to Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, before Pesach. I try and get even, but I write down everything as I go along, as you know, as I'm giving, you know, whatever I'm earning, what my wife's earning, um, and try and get the bracha of the Masu. Okay, so we're coming up to the end of the share. Is there any other questions? So maybe we'll say another one more idea. So the Gemara continues, no Gemara, the Parasha. Parasha continues and talks about um, the Tzarat. Tzarat, Negat Tzarat. Negat Tzarat is one of the, what is Tzarat? Leprosy, translated as leprosy. But it's not, it's not leprosy. What is Sorry, it? Sorry, yeah, I had a quick question. Very quick question. Okay. And so I read the English and it refers to the, the priest. This is the priest needs to check. Yes, the priest, priest needs to I thought, I thought it meant coin. So why does it yeah. say coin? Yeah, just the translation that you have. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. yeah, priest means coin. That is actually very interesting halakha because the tzarat is a, it's an illness, but which is a, it's a physical illness, physical symptom to spiritual illness. Right? It comes from mainly from Lashon Ara. It can also be other things as well. Um, also can be other things from from also from stealing or from from shfichut amim from nida from what is there? There's a few things ishbala sheker, but the main thing is says lashonara. Joe, what did you ask? Remind me. Um, oh, priest. Yeah. Priest. So very interesting in our lacha is because in order to identify the tzarat, how do you know if it's a tzarat or some uh, acne uh, disease? Be checked uh, by the priest. Yeah. Okay. So now you have a kohen. Priest means a Kohen, okay? So now I don't know yeah. if you have a Kohen. Not every Kohen knows all the halachot of Tzarat. You know, it's not every Kohen is a doctor, right? So you have a Kohen, he's like- don't, you, know, you don't need to be a doctor. What do you mean? You but need tarat, to know and identify Tzarat. Now that you can have, and let me just just put it in context, okay? You have a Kohen, he's a good, he's a good Jew. He's uh, religious, you know, keeps Shabbat, goes to shul, does Bekat Kohanim the whole time. But he's a plumber. And so he understands in plumbing. You know, give him the pipe, he'll know to tell you where's the leak. But you give him a tarat, he doesn't know what's the difference between tarat, the leprosy, a skin disease. You know, he's not, he can't, uh, what's the word, analyze it. Uh, what's the word? When a doctor checks, he can't, you know, prescribe it and uh, tell, diagnose. identify, diagnose, thank you, diagnose it. He can't diagnose what is. The halacha is, that he needs to go to Tamil Chacham. And Tamil Chacham, who studies the laws of Tzarat, he can say, this is Tzarat. And then you get a 13-year-old Kohen, who just did Bar Mitzvah yesterday, just knows how to read, just about how to read Hebrew. And then he says, Hazar is Tzarat. And only when the Kohen says that it's Tzarat, that's when it's Tzarat. That is, that is the law, because here we're talking about, it's not something which is physical. It's not like, 
Okay, oh yeah, it's right. Yeah, I asked my mom, it's right. I asked my dad, my sister. Yeah, she had it last week. It's also, it's right, it's for sure. Till the Kohen comes and says it, it's not right. That's the power of the Kohen. The power of the Kohen, which is given the Kohen of, of Baracha and given the Kohen. Maybe I'll just add, because it's just that we were talking about also Tzedakah and Kohen. So there's a very famous Rashi. Rashi says that the person should give his money to Kohen. And in fact, that's where all the matanot, matanot kehuna. There's 24 presents which were given to the Kohanim. And Rashi says, somebody who gives money to the Kohen, he will become rich. Now, why do you become rich if you give money to the Kohen? Now, if you think about it as an investment, where's the best investment to make? Where you get the most money, right? So where's the best zakah to give, says Rashi? The best zakah you give to get back the most money is for Kohen. Now, why did the Torah say you give so many presents to the Kohen? Apart from Maaser and Pidyon Aben, there's also all of the, of the Matanot Kona, of also from the Korbanot, uh, Zra, Velechayayim. There's, there's a lot of, of, of Matanot, Chala, uh, Maaser, Truma, all of these things are given to the Kohen. There's 24 presents. And it says Rashi, whoever gives the Kohen gets more. So, why is the Torah interested in giving so many presents to the Kohen? I'm getting blank faces now. I want someone to give me a suggestion. I don't know. At least you're just giving a blank face. No one else is actually giving me a face. <laughs> I don't. I'm no clue. No clue. So, if you think about it, what is the position of Kohen? Every person in Am Yisrael has a Yerusha in the land of Israel. Everyone has their own territory. Kohen has no territory. He lives in his own cities, and he has to dedicate his life into service of God in the Beit Hamikdash. But, but Kohanim, they're, they're not like Levim. They don't have like the lands outside of the city. They're like yes, yeah, in Shevet Levi. Okay, so they have the, the Levis. They they're, they're spread out, but they don't have the actual the land. And whereas the Levi do have the cities of the Hajj, right? But the service, the the life of a Kohen is dedicated. In the service of the Beit Hamikdash, he's there to connect the people. He's there to connect the people to God. Does that make sense? That means when a person comes to his korban, he says, "Okay, I need now my, to offer up my korban." How does the korban get from here to Shomai? The kohen takes it and he does a whole service. There's a special achot where he takes the animal, where he slaughters it, how he slaughters it, how he collects the blood. Which vessel he collects the blood? How does he go to? How does he pass on? Brings it up to the Mizbeach. Which way he goes up? Where he goes? It. Where does he put it? Where does he sprinkle the blood? Where does he put the meat? The inside, the cleaning. There's a lot of work to do now. All of that is involved with it every day, and all that he's doing for the benefit of Am Yisrael. Okay. So now, mm -hmm. Hashem says, "Okay, he's working for you. He's working for me." It needs to be funded, all right? Yeah. And that is why there's a mitzvah to specifically give the Kohen. Now, there's a mitzvah to what? Mitzvah to, be, to fund and be mefarnes to give to the Kohen. Because the Kohen is the intermediary between you and God. Now, if you think about it, I heard this once from, I think it was um, the name of the Maharal from uh, Rabbi Hartman. In England and London, Rabbi Hartman. You were actually one of the people who on the beautiful girls. So he told me this following idea, I think it was from him, that seven represents everything which is in this world, right? Seven days, the world was created. Um, the seven days of the week, there's, you know, the, the seven, on Kabbalistic terms, the seven dimensions, because you've got six, six sides in three dimensions, and then what puts it all together? That's the seven. That represents the physical world. Eight, is the number which represents the supernatural, right? That's why you've got the eighth day of the Mila, which is taking, brings him into the Kedusha of Am Yisrael, outside of the physical, which is holy. That's why you got the nest of Hanukkah, which is supernatural nest, which is on the eighth day. Uh, Did you tell us? Eight days, sorry? Did you tell us that on the eighth day, the blood of a baby 
is more um, resilient. Um, yeah, the hemoglobin the the in the blood. Yeah, hemoglobin yeah, in the blood, so which is the, the, le the level of iron, which basically causes the blood to congeal, which yeah. makes the stop, Highest, you stop, yeah. stop bleeding. Yeah, the, the, the peak time, you see as a child, you know, you can fall down, graze your knee, right? Within two days, it's like nothing happened. It's all dried up, cleared up, and, and healed itself. As a child, all your bruises and, and uh, cuts and wounds, they heal very quickly. Mm. As you get older, you see you can get bruised and it can be there for weeks. Yeah. Older people no, can you have- You said supernatural. Months. That's why, that's why you said supernatural and, and then that's why I remembered. Oh, so on that level, the hemoglobin in the blood goes down, drops for the first three days. That's why the third day is the most difficult day after Mila. And then it goes up till the eighth day, and that's a peak for his whole life. Peak for his whole and life, then, yeah. it, then it gradually goes down to the end of his life. So where was I? Oh, so the Kohen. So if the natural number representing this world is number seven, the supernatural, or which represents Kedusha, is number eight. So what number do you have between seven and eight? 7.5. 7.5, exactly. Now if you take away, what's the gematria of a Kohen? Gematria of Kohen? Is to, kaf is 20, hey is 5, and nun is 50. So do the math for me. Yeah, 75. 75. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 75. So 75, that's in between the two worlds. So the coin, he's the one who's connecting from this world into the next world. Now, uh, so some people say that in this uh, post and nowadays, when we don't have the Quranim, who are literally serving in the house of God. But there are, there are, there are people who dedicate their lives to studying and teaching Torah. That is the, the ones who are learning Torah. Uh, those are Avrachim. And Man Malchei Rabbanan, the Rabbanan, the, those are right, the, the, today they are, they are the Quranim. Because they, they learn Torah, they teach the Torah, they're in the service of God. So it's, nowadays, the equivalent of what the Quran will be there. Or if you can find a Tamil Chacham, who is also a Kohen and a Tamil Chacham, that of course will be better. And they're actually the ones who need the money. Sometimes you have Kohanim, they've got big businesses, they've got big properties, <laughs> they don't need your money, and they're not going to bring you any closer to God. But if you give it somebody to study Torah, then you do. Okay, now, just mentioning, by the way, because uh, Joe mentioned that. So just to end off the shiur, because it's really running to the end of the shiur, a little bit on Sarat. Now, if you study the Torah, there's different levels of impurity. Okay, one level is Tumat Nida. Tumat Nida is a certain level of impurity. Uh, you know, some say that a woman is in Nida shouldn't go to Shul. We, we are according to Allah, she goes to Shul normally, but not to the whole, you know, to Kathach Sefer Torah. Question. Not to touch Sefer Torah, which is Nida. But everything else is normal. She can go to Shul, she can go to pray, go to people's houses, and that's fine. There's more, more higher level of Tumat. Somebody who touches uh, a tumah of a sheretz is contamination. Tumah of a what? Sheretz, sheretz is like um, a dead animal, but it's specifically one of the shratzim, uh, like a dead uh, mouse. Or a, lo a lobster. Or a lo I don't know if it's a lobster, but that kind of creature, which is a cool, is there's specific eight creatures which are too much shratzim and they have too much sheretz. But I think a mole, a weasel, a dead mole, a dead weasel, a dead rat, I think, a dead uh, frog, some of types. Uh, Gillard said maybe also a crab or a lobster. It could be, I don't know. But there's eight animals. That is even a higher level of tumor. The, even the higher level of tumor is tumat met. Someone touches a dead body. Um, a dead body, even if you're a Kohen, you cannot go into the Beit HaMikdash. You've got to stay outside. However, the most... Uh, I wouldn't say contagious, but the most stringent and most difficult Tuma is Tuma of Tzarat. Tuma of Tzarat, he has to leave the campus. That means not only he's not allowed in the Bet Amigdash, he's not even allowed in, in, the, in the whole uh, uh, in the whole populated area of the city. He has to be excommunicated and he has to leave the town, leave the city, he has to be on his own. No one is allowed near. And paraduma, paraduma is, is but, used for what? For to what met and what else? For, 
for Tuma Tmet. I'm not sure if it's also for the Tuma, I think also for the Matsura they sprinkle on him. The Fara Duma. The mainly for the Tuma Tmet. Because there's a lot of process of for the Tara for the for the Tarat. You got me that you got me that Gilad? No, I apologize. Of Lalot Larabite, because I heard the Shiu that was specifically mentioned they saw Lalot Larabite be glad to Yes, that's yeah, to Matmet. We need the Paraduma, and then we can go on to Arabite because you're not allowed to go on Arabite when you're not when you're impure. But Sarat is even more than that, you're not even allowed to go even in into the yeah, yeah, okay, around Yerushalayim. You have to go to completely outside of the city. So, why is it so bad this and so much the sin of, of Lashon Arab? And this is specifically relevant to nowadays, the period of the Sfirat Omer. Okay, well, we're not taking haircuts, not shaving, not listening to music. It's uncomfortable. But it's all to remember the Tamidim of Rabbi Akiva. When they didn't speak respectfully to each other. You know, you can disagree with somebody. You can respect him. You know, every week we have discussion in Torah. You know, we disagree with each other. We try and find out the proof. We tell different, the truth, different ideas. But also a good cause, and we all respect each other. And uh, Tzarat comes when somebody doesn't disrespect his brother. And he speaks badly about him. He speaks to Shana about him. He said, what? You don't realize what you're doing to yourself. The Gemara tells us that three people die by Lashon Now, the person who says the Lashon the person who hears the Lashon and the person who he's speaking about, Everyone loses. It's a lose-lose situation. And it's it's so severe that it breaks the whole of Am Yisrael. Now, Nida, he says that the whole Beit HaMikdash got destroyed between this, because of this Lashona, the Sinat Chinam, this is what. And um, so I've got, uh, we're running very late, but I'm just going to I'm going to skip out what I wanted to say, and I'll just end up with one, one idea. The Tzara spreads it to the whole body. A person has to leave, leave the, the place where he is and be on his own. Um, and after a period of days, of two weeks, he gets checked again. If, they go, if he's done tshuva, then it goes down. If he hasn't done tshuva, he stays out. How long does he stay out for? A month. So another two, two weeks. It's, yeah, I guess two weeks to get to the coin checks him till he comes better. But if he hasn't gone better, he doesn't go back. Mm-hmm. How long does he stay for? Once the coin decided this is definitely tarat, he has to go out. Question: How long does he need to go out for? Mayor, Mao, Gilan, Joe, anybody. So that's what it's not uh, until I, I, I don't think I, I don't know there's, peri- there, there's a period of time. He stay he's staying there until uh um Did it goes away. Two weeks. He goes there until until he does tshuva. Until it goes away. That means it could be two weeks, it could be two months, it could be two years, it could be ten years, it could be till he dies. Until he does tshuva, he doesn't come back in. That means we don't want you to be part of Am Yisrael at all. If you go and stop your Lashon and start speaking badly about other people, they'll come back. Go outside, think about how no one wants to be with you. You are like the worst, most contaminated person. Why? We just speak badly. You have to realize that Am Yisrael has to be united and be together and it has to be one. And if you don't love everybody, it doesn't matter who you spoke about, you're out. And a person has to do Shabbat before he's allowed back in. And a person can die from his Sarah just being outside. When he comes back in, then he shaves all his hair and he brings a korban and then he's welcome back in and it's fine. Yeah, that's what happens. So I heard from my rabbi and I had this 15 years ago. Um, and I was saying it in his name, uh, Rabbi Kilati. And he said that from his own observation, well, let me mention first, he said that nowadays, People compare the um, cancerous uh, disease that 
is unidentified. We don't really know how to cure it, how to deal with it. To the tzarat. That tzarat can affect young and old, men and women, healthy and unhealthy people. You can be young and strong and healthy, working out in the gym, and you can get cancer. You can get like tzarat, the same thing. Uh, and when a person goes into chemo, he has to go on, on his own. No one's allowed with him. No one can be with him. He has to be secluded. That is like the tzarat. He's allowed to be out. Uh, and there's a period of treatment that they lose their hair. Also like tzarat. And so Rabbi Kalati said from his own observation that everyone says that. Uh, a lot of people say that also in Sunnah. But Rabbi Kalati said that he's noticed a few cases, maybe 30 cases in his lifetime, where he's seen people who had cancer and all of them had some kind of makhlukit in the family between brothers and sisters, between parents, between children, between neighbors, they all had some makhlukit. And he said every single one of them, they all had that. And he said some of them, they, they dealt with it and they did shalom. They made shalom and they lived. They lived longer. They got, some of them got cured from it. You know, when a person hits life in the face and the doctor says, listen, you've got a certain amount of time to live. Then a person straight away, you know, comes to the realization what is important in life, what's not important, what's worth fighting about, what's not worth fighting about. You know, what should you just, just give up on? What's really meaning on life? And people do, people do chuba. People stop fighting, people make friends, people stop becoming more giving, do more good things. And he said, all of those, they just stopped, they got killed. And some people that they didn't change and they went, they, they, they died from that. Um, I know somebody that was given three months and I know that she, she had a fight with her sister, nasty bad fight and they made friends um, and she, she actually lived not three months but she lived the, an, an extra year but they made shalom, they made shalom, she lived an extra year, she went through another year of going to like weddings and smachot and being with her family, she saw grandchildren. She lived throughout. So when we're learning the parashah of Tazriya, and we're learning Matara about Tzarat, let's think about each other. Think about that. How, how we want to uh, live for the right reasons, live for the right purposes, and see the messages. And maybe we'll, un we'll end up with this idea. I mentioned this before, that there's three different levels of Tzarat. There's Tzarat Aguf, Tzarat Abgadim, and there's Tzarat Abayit. The Torah talks about it through the parasha. This person can have leprosy on the body. There's leprosy on clothes. There is no such thing in the world as a disease on clothes. It's, it's totally spiritual. That means you see a stain. And the, doc and the doctor, the Kohen, identifies it as Tzarat. Or the wall. The wall has Tzarat. It doesn't exist. Now, you can have in this nowadays, uh, what's called on the wall? Mold, uh, yeah. what's it called? Mold. Mold, yeah, okay. Yeah. Ovesh in Hebrew, yeah. Uh, when, when it looks like disease on the wall. So why do you treat it, you clean it? But the, the, the Torah gives you a message. That means when, Hashem warns a person. You're doing Hashem on the right, you're going to get Sarat. But I'm not going to attack you directly. There's going to be a warning sign. Look on your walls. Don't see, so you don't get the message, I'll give you another message. Your clothes. You don't get the message, I'll give you another message, your body. When are you gonna get the message clear? So I had also, you know, even nowadays we don't have the exact tarat, but we do believe everything happens for a reason. So a person should check himself. Listen, I can see there's mold in my house, there's something being broken in my house, something broken, something needs to be fixed in my house. That's a sign from Hashem. My clothes, this, I'm getting stained every time. And my clothes are getting ripped. Why are my clothes getting ripped? You know, suddenly you catch yourself on a hook and listen, that's a message from us. You get a cut on your fingers, on your hands. That's another message. If you see those messages, then you're not going to have a stronger message. You know, a person knocks slightly. You don't hear, knock louder. So please God, we, we should all be ready to see this, the signs of Hashem, understand the messages and correct ourselves to become better people, more giving people. Let's make to love each other. Let's not shame to be zochah for Mashiach.
Amen. To be good, giving people, Amen. be charitable, and may Allah Hashem be zochet to become the zakhar, not to be the nekeva, not to be the woman, but to be, be the man, be giving from all our goodness. Amen. Um, thank you for listening tonight. Thank Sorry you. for thank you. I know my oh, say it's very late. It's very late for him, isn't it? No? No, but thank you for staying to the end. It's a pleasure to have you all. I wish you all a Shabbat Shalom and Chodesh Tov. Chodesh Tov. This week is Chodesh, Rosh Chodesh. Today is, tomorrow is Rosh Chodesh Nisan. It, not Nisan. Rosh Chodesh Iyar. Iyar is, 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 uh, Iyar is Rashi Tavot Aleph, Yud, Yud, Resh. Aleph, Ani, Yud is Hashem, Rofecha. Ani, Hashem, Rofecha. As Hashem should be a full Hashem for all of Israel. Amen. For Michael, Ben Avigail, Rachel Batsara, and for all of Israel, I want to share with you And I can remind everyone, every Rosh Chodesh, tomorrow you got Friday breakfast. Everyone take out the wife for, for a nice breakfast. Kids are in school. Go out, enjoy your breakfast. I said, free, you can dress up nicely. Kavod for Rosh Chodesh. All the hot out of Rosh Chodesh is not included. So you got free time. Is a mitzvah to be mechabed de isha on Rosh Chodesh, and it's mitzvah to be marbe seuda. So you get marbe seuda because you're going out to a nice breakfast. Mechabed de isha because you're taking your out. You get hot out Rosh Chodesh is not included. So it's the best time to go out because you don't take the bill. And, mm-hmm. and you dress, wear, wear nice clothes, go, get dressed nicely. Have a nice breakfast to dress up. Wish you all a Chodesh Tov and a Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for joining us. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thanks. Shabbat shalom to everyone. Yeah, questions now. Anyone wants a question? No, no, no. No? Okay, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.